Sorry, darlings, but you're doing it all wrong. You go and take your DNA test, right? And it's uh, 67% here, 27% over there, less than one somewhere else. But dear, that's not the point of that type of DNA. Now, unless you pay the really big bucks for autosomal DNA, you're using the short-term relationship DNA for deep past uh, information, and it won't work. Autosomal is the big buck one, and that's the one you pay to find out immediate relationships between you and your fifth cousin second time is removed who lives in Poughkeepsie. That's what that's for. That's the recombining DNA between mommy and daddies. So you can track the various ancestors back through, say, a couple thousand years. Okay? That is not what Y DNA that all men have from their fathers and passes only to sons. Or. MT DNA, which comes from mothers to their children and is only transmitted through the female line. Mothers to daughters and sons, but only the daughters pass it along. Okay? So the grandchildren, if they're female, will either have the great grandmother's DNA or they'll have some other woman's DNA for their MT DNA. Okay? Okay. So, now that you have that down, the MT DNA and the Y DNA is what you use to discover your haplo group. And that's for the deep past 30, 40, 50 million years ago, ever since human beings started walking upright and speaking in tongues. Okay, so don't tell me you're 67% Ireland. Nobody cares. What I want to know, are you RB1, RB1B, RB1A, RB12B, 3B, 1A, 3B, with your snips, in case of a male, or a female, if you're JT, pre-JT, N, Q, whatever. The haplo group is what defines a deep past, and that's all about the migration of populations and the flow of genetics. How did you get from Africa to Scandinavia? Well, and what's the interactions that went on between you and your environment that caused your L haplo group? to become a T2, for example, which is what you would normally find up there in Scandinavia, Scandinavia, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland. Okay, that's what the 67 and so forth is for. It shows you the path of migration over time of groups of people and the genetic flow. So just because you're R1B doesn't mean that your fifth cousin twice removed in living in Poughkeepsie really is your fifth cousin. For that, you will definitely have to do a lot more work. But what I find very interesting about the whole thing is as you start doing your paper DNA and start actually looking, digging into the records, you find, voila! Yes, the DNA tends to legitimize the paper trail, and the two speak to each other. So it's a very interesting and complex situation, but 
please don't be confused between which kinds of DNA you're doing, the autosomal for your second cousins, or the haplogroup, Y-DNA or MT-DNA, for your deep past. Treat them differently because they're saying different stories. All right? Now that we have that cleared up, thank you for watching, and please have a good day. Another time around